Hi everyone. So I want to walk through a, a, a fatigue problem example, um, which is actually from the from the textbook, uh, but I think provides a useful illustration of how to implement this process um, for understanding fatigue loading. So on the screen, uh, I have some setup for what we're talking about here. Basic idea is you have a part, cylindrical part, loaded axially um, with some sort of cyclic loading, and we have some material properties that tell us uh, the yield strength and the ultimate strength for this part. So the first thing that we need to start working on is, is setting up our SN curve and setting up what we want to know or what we know about our SN curve. So to do that, I mentioned in an earlier video that we need to know our 10 to the third limit. And if we uh, refer to the textbook, figure 811 uh, gives us that for axial loading, we have a 10 to the third limit of 0.75 SU. So that's easy enough. We can take 0.75 plug in our 150 KSI, and we get 112 KSI. Great. We also need to know our infinite life endurance limit, where we say it's equal to SN prime, CL, CG, CS, CT, CR. And we can go through and, and kind of figure out what each of these is. Well, SN prime, and I've pulled in uh, table 8.1 from the textbook because it provides useful insight to basically all of this information. SN prime uh, gives us right down here in this small little bullet at the bottom, which you can't probably read. It says SN prime equals 0.5 SU for steel lacking better data. So it's kind of a, a generic answer when we don't have more specific information. 0.5 SU. So coming back to my equation then, I'm gonna plug in 0.5 times 150. Uh, CL is my load factor for axial. My table says that that's one. CG for axial loading and let's see, based on diameter, um, we have a range of 0 0.7 to 0 0.9. Uh, let's assume that our diameter is less than two inches. It isn't specified yet, but let's assume that it is. And we just need to pick something then. So I'm gonna say 0 0.9. Uh, let's see, surface, fa uh, surface factor we would refer to uh, figure 813. Um, the setup for this problem um, says that it is a commercially polished surface. So that's a pretty good, um, pretty good surface. And if we look at table 813 under these conditions, I think we would get that, or excuse me, figure 813, 0.9 would be our surface. Temperature, the problem doesn't say anything about having high temperature, so we can go ahead and use one and reliability, uh, it doesn't specify anything that we want higher reliability. So from our table over here, um, we'll just start with the default of one. Great, so we can calculate all that out and we end up getting 61 KSI for our endurance limit. And that's pretty much all we need in order to fully define our SN chart. So through the magic of television, I have the SN chart down here already. And basically what our two calculations just did is gave us this point here and this point here. Now on the chart, it's showing points for 10 to the fourth cycles and 10 to the fifth cycles as well. Luckily, we could just calculate those uh, because we know everything else about it. And I just want to talk about that for a second. So say I wanted to know what this 10 to the fifth limit was. So basically um, I would call that S 10 to the fifth or something like that equals what? And 
if you uh, kind of remember any of your math courses, you might remember that we can do something called linear interpolation. Um, so anytime we have a straight line and we know two points on that line, we can interpolate between them to figure out a point that we don't know. And effectively, we do have a straight line. Now, we do have to be careful because this straight line is only straight on log-log axes. So when we do our linear interpretation, uh, we have to take that into account. So to start our linear interpretation, we basically take two known quantities um, and do like a rise over run type calculation. So I need to remember this is log. And my first point that I know is 112 over here. That's my 10 to the third limit. And my other point that I know is my endurance limit of one or of 61. And my x-axis change, so this is the, the run of my rise over run, is 10 to the third to 10 to the sixth. Now, I would also be using log scale here, but if you recall, log is base 10, so log of 10 to the something means that I just take that power and move it out front and the log and the 10 cancel. So I can say three minus six. And that's the same thing as using the log um, scale in this case. And this has to be equal to one of my points and the uh, point that I'm trying to interpolate. So I'm going to take that 10 to the third point again, 1, 2, minus log of the limit that I don't know, which is s 10 to the fifth. And now I'm talking about 3 compared to 5 as my run in this case. And I've got everything in here. All I have is this one unknown value that I can go ahead and calculate. So you can obviously see the answer is over on my, on my chart. But effectively, all I need to do is um, you know, take this 3 minus 5, minus five multiply that over, um, divide that by the 3 minus 6, so negative 2 over negative 6, and multiply that by log 112 minus log 61, divide or excuse me, um, subtract that from log 112, and then I would be end up with log of s 10 to the fifth is equal to something. I can undo that log by taking 10 to the power of it. So 10 to the power of the log gives me the s 10, and then 10 to the power of whatever number is on my right-hand side gives me my s 10 to the fifth value in this case of 75 KSI. So I can use this, this linear interpretation, or excuse me, linear inter can't talk, linear interpolation in order to find any value that I would want um, for any, you know, say particular life cycle on this chart. The next step then is to take this data from my, my SN curve and move it to my constant life fatigue diagram. So just like uh, in the example, what we do is we take all of these data points and read them onto our chart and plot them, um, extending the lines from uh, wherever they cross on the, the um, alternating axis down to where they cross the ultimate strength on the um, mean axis. And that gives me the, the chart that I need. I add on my yield strength, 120, and the lines connecting that onto my chart. And I've, I've constructed my, my Goodman diagram. Now, to give us uh, something to solve for, let's go ahead and say that we have an alternating load between 1,000 pounds and 5,000 pounds. And we want to design for a safety factor of two. And basically what we're talking about is uh, what diameter of our round shaft that we're applying this load to would result in a safety factor of two. So first, we need to go ahead and calculate what our mean stress would be. Well, we've got our alternating situation here, right? 1,000 to 5,000 pounds. So let's say that we can take our mean force and divide that by an area.
area is unknown because uh, we don't know the diameter. That's what we're solving for. So we get 3,000 over A. If we factor in a safety factor, that means we're looking for 6,000 over A. So basically our stress, um, we have to double our stress effectively uh, if we want to take, in that safe, uh, take into account that safety factor. Our alternating stress is basically what is our peak past that mean. So if our mean is 3,000, then our peak is 5,000. That means our alternating load is 2,000 because it's the difference between those two. Or with a safety factor, I get 4,000 over A. Now, the way that, that they've shown how to do this in, in the book is to say, well, if we look at this graphically, let's figure out what our slope of our, our line over here is on our constant like fatigue diagram. So that's 4,000 over A over 6,000 over A, and that gets 0 0.67. So that gives us the slope of this line here. And if we charted this accurately enough, we can kind of read some stuff from this chart then. One of the things is, is if we were looking at the infinite life fatigue, then we'd want to know what's going on right at this data point where my line, my dash dotted line crosses my, my infinite life, um, infinite life chart. And that's easy enough to find. To do that, I need to go ahead and set up an equation to solve for the intersection of these two points. So I know what my two equations are, right? We can use uh, the equation of a line. I'll give myself a little more space here. So I know the equation of, a, of my two lines. Uh, one is uh, 0 0.67, again, as I said, what my slope of my dash dotted line is. Uh, so that's uh, slope times x, which is sigma mean, and it has a zero for a y-intercept. My other equation is my endurance limit line, which goes from 61 down to 150. So I can set that equal to rise over run minus 61 over 150 sigma m plus y-intercept of 61. <clears throat> so I have an equation. If I add this uh, component over to the left, I have everything in terms of sigma m. I can go ahead and solve that for sigma m, and I would get 56.69. Oops. KSI. And great. Now I have a... a a mean stress at which my endurance limit would be my uh, where I would hit my endurance limit and I have a relationship from up above to area so I can say 6,000 over area now I have to be careful this is 56.69 KSI so 56,690 um, pounds per square inch so take that thousand into account and my area, I can substitute in pi r squared. If I do that and solve for r, I get 0 0.1835 inches or a diameter of 0 0.367 inches. Great, so what this is telling me is that if I want a safety factor of two, my diameter for uh, infinite life endurance should be 0 0.367 inches, and in theory my part won't fail no matter how many cycles um, I would subject it to. Now, suppose I wanted uh, to save some money, and this isn't a high-use part, so I only need it to last for a thousand cycles. So if I come over here and follow this line up, the one thing we should notice right away is, well, right here is the intersection with 10 to the third cycles. 
However, we have to be careful because I've already at that point crossed my yield stress limit. So I'm going to get yielding due to static, you know, load exceeding the yield uh, criteria before I make it to my 10 to the third line. So in that case, I need to calculate my limit based on that static yielding situation. So I'm not going to write it all out, but I could basically apply this same criteria, set up two equations, solve for sigma m, plug in my 6000a, and uh, maybe I should note that this is 10 to the third, or excuse me, 10 to the sixth cycles, or 10 to the third cycles using the same process, I get that my diameter would only need to be 0 0.326 inches. So I could have a slightly smaller part if I don't have as high of a load or a, a cycle requirement um, on, on the thing. So overall, uh, oops, realize you can't even see what I'm writing there. Overall for fatigue, I have a couple of things I need to take into account. I need to figure out what my loading scenario is. I need to uh, determine what my mean and alternating stress are because they uh, allow me to apply my situation to the constant life fatigue diagram. And I also need to determine my limits. So depending on how many cycles I want my part to last, I need to figure out what those endurance limits or 10 to the third limit uh, would be, which is, you know, it's kind of like setting the yield criteria when we talk about, um, when we talk about uh, static loading and we use the failure theories. When we're talking about fatigue, we're comparing against uh, whatever this endurance limit is, which is a statistically determined quantity. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop there.